All right, so welcome to our cooking demo this evening. And during this cooking demo, we are going to make a vegan mac and cheese. We are also going to make enchiladas uh, three ways, really, enchiladas, quesadillas, and burritos, all with the same mix. So I'm just going to bring you over and just show you right now what we have for the mix. So let me do that for you right now. So basically what I have here what I have here a little bit of feedback but I'll change that in a second is um, some peppers, some collard green, some onions and some zucchini. And I'm just actually sauteing it in salt and oil. There's no much of that. As I make this, as I make this enchilada mix, I'm just gonna, while it's cooking, just gonna show you the seasoning. And then we're gonna move over to um, doing the mac and cheese while this is cooking, okay? So what we're going to use um, just to season the enchiladas, we are going to use just some chili powder, okay, um, some oregano, um, onion powder, and just for a little bit of heat, we're going to use the chili flakes. It's very simple. You can also add cilantro. We are going to add a twist of a little bit of fresh lime. Um, the reason why I really like these enchiladas is that kids love them. And what they don't always realize um, is that I just always load it with like vegetables they wouldn't normally eat. They aren't normally wanting to eat collard greens or zucchini. They love the peppers. They're, they're happy with the beans. Um, and then we add cheese to it as well. So that's why I really like the enchiladas because it's kind of a sloppy bit of a meal, but they don't realize all the greens that they're getting in. So we're going to season it now. Now, once this is, um, it's, it's almost ready, the vegetables are softening, I'm actually gonna add some diced tomatoes to it. With We're gonna try to hold back the juice a little bit. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with the juice afterwards. But we're going to um, put some diced tomatoes in there. We're gonna add the black beans. You can add whatever beans you want. Uh, of course, we're gonna, we wanna try to keep this plant-based. So we are going to be doing this with, um, I'm going to see if I can. Okay. Okay. So, what I would recommend is the second Carolyn that you see on the screen, pin that on your screen. So that becomes the, because that's the one, that's the camera that I can take everywhere that I'm cooking. Okay. So, pin that on your screen so that you're able to see everywhere I'm going um, with the food. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to now just add the diced tomatoes and I'm going to add the black beans. 
Sometimes I add tofu, sometimes I use kidney bean. It's totally, it's totally up to you. Okay, so let me just add those vegetables. Well, add the tomatoes, the canned tomatoes and the black beans. A little bit of salt. A bit more chili pepper and one ingredient that I forgot, this is chili powder, is the cumin. I love cumin. And so we're, we're gonna add the cumin as well. This smells delicious. All right, so we're going to let this simmer while we work on our, and I guess that's where that is super hot. So we're gonna let that simmer while we add our, uh, while we start to make our mac and cheese. So to make our mac and cheese, you do need a blender, okay? So for the mac and cheese, you need a blender. Uh, I'm using a Vitamix, okay? So um, what you're basically going to do is you are going to take your Vitamix and you're just gonna add all ingredients. It's really simple. Let me just show you something. I soak some cashews, okay? If you wanna do the quick soak method, you just soak them in hot water for about 20 minutes or an hour. I have some chopped red peppers. Uh, garlic powder, onion powder. One thing you will need to do is get some nutritional yeast flakes, okay? So this is important as well for this. Nutritional yeast flakes aren't necessary. There's a little bit of a misconception out there. It's not a healthy food. It's, um, you know, it, it's not, whoops, poor Joanne is sitting in the waiting room. Um, it's not necessarily a healthy food. Um, but uh, it's not necessarily unhealthy either. It's basically just the yeast that grows on top of molasses. But many people think that it's really good for you because it's got lots of vitamin B12 in it. Uh, it doesn't. It's been fortified with B12. It's been fortified with B vitamins. So in and of itself, it just has a bit of a cheesy flavor, which is going to be important for our cooking today. Okay. And then um, the other thing you'll need is just a little bit of salt a little bit of lemon juice and um, we're going to go and we're going to make this and let me just bring it over to the camera that you can see a little bit clearer so we're going to um, use some of our water from the cashews but not all of it sorry for the noise some extra purified water Right. Okay, so here's our, here's our bucket. So we're going to use our bucket and we're going to add the cashews in there. That was one cup, which is a double recipe. I'm intentionally making a double recipe. Okay, you're going to add your red peppers in it. The red peppers are for sweetness and color. And it requires a little bit of lemon juice or lime juice. 
Our enchilada mix is ready here. So I'm just going to turn it off. And it's at the end, if you're going to put cilantro, it's at the end that you add the cilantro and the lime juice. So that's what I'm going to do for our enchilada mix. I'm sorry, this is so delicious. I have to show you. Yummy. Like just, just jump in. Okay, so this is good. It's cooked. You want it to cool down a little bit. You want a little bit of bite left for the vegetables. I don't promise to be the best vegan chef, but I just, you know, enjoy delicious food. That's how the energy shack was birthed. Food that just like tastes like home. All right, that's ready. The stove is off now. Let's get back to our wonderful. Okay, so we have these items. Now we're going to add our other ingredients. So we have the onion powder, and we do need fresh garlic or dry. I have a neighbor who loves me and sends me all of the vegetables from her garden because mine isn't ready yet. And so I have some fresh organic garlic. If you don't have that, you don't have a good neighbor, don't do it yourself, you can just use garlic powder. I don't re recommend unless this is for adults that you put any heat in it at all. Uh, it's a, okay a little bit in the enchiladas because usually we serve it with guacamole and other things and cheese, so it takes it over. Um, so now we're just going to add the nutritional yeast, which is uh, a quarter cup if you're using the full. If you're using the full recipe, it's uh, if you're using a double recipe, it's going to be a quarter cup. Uh, half the recipe is going to require just uh, two tablespoons. Okay, we're gonna add our salt. Now here's the thing is that with the salt, um, you're putting this over plain pasta. And I've used a gluten-free chickpea pasta today. So um, you want the mix to be a little bit saltier than you normally would have food because once it goes over the pasta, you kind of like, you lose the flavor. So just a little bit more salt, but the salt enough for the recipe and you could totally take the salt out or, or minimize, it's up to you. Okay. Adding a bit more water and you can add more water as you go. Plug your ears, I'm going to blend. Okay, that's done. Now, this is not very thick. It's a little bit soupy, but as it cooks, it thickens. Cashews normally do that. You want a smooth sauce. We're just going to taste it, make sure it's good. If you haven't noticed, I don't really know how to use measurements when I'm cooking for some reason. I don't do that, but the measurements will all be there for you. I need to eyeball things. I'm not a good baker. Um, I need to just look at stuff to know, but um, you will get the full measurements of the recipe, I promise. Wow, that garlic. 
so much garlic. I hope it kind of gets cooked out. That garlic is so strong. I should have taken into account it was organic for my neighbor's place, but um, wow. Okay, this, believe it or not, does not have enough salt in it, and I'm just going to add a little bit of the nutritional yeast. Wowie. Okay, I'm cured if I had a virus. Frozen garlic back in the freezer. <laughs> Wild and crazy. Um, I also found that the red peppers were not very sweet. So I'm actually going to throw a couple more red peppers in there because it doesn't have that sweetness. And that's just because of the red peppers. And I'm sure I have one somewhere. Yeah. Now you'll notice that the cheese is orange. Orange peppers don't make this cheese orange, it makes it yellow. So you really want to use red peppers because mixed with the white cashews, then it has a really good taste. I'm going to just drop those in there. So you do have to taste and adjust. Normally, all I need is one pepper. That's now one and a half. Look at yours again. Mm. Um, so much garlic. I think I've just overdone it with garlic too close. So listen to the recipe. It says, I think it says too close. Wow, I put three organic ones. Anyway, everybody in my home will be absolutely cured of any virus that they have. So this is really simple. All you're going to do from here is I already cooked some gluten free pasta. This is a chickpea lentil pasta. And you cook it al dente because you're going to put it in the oven. Take it three fifty to start. There we go. Okay, so all you're going to do now is you're going to. I'm still new in my kitchen. Uh, here. Perfect. Just dropping your pasta in here. I must be having some company this weekend, so I'm making two. If I'm not having company, you guys are all welcome to come over because this is a lot of mac and cheese. <laughs> Now you could get a little bit more fancy here and you could throw some spinach, some pieces of spinach in there, some other vegetables. Maybe you want to throw some broccoli. And the thing is, is about this cheese, it's, it's, um, it's really versatile. You can take this cheese and you could actually um, pour it um, over some broccoli and cauliflower and just, you know, use it as a cheese sauce. You could use this cheese for your enchiladas. Um, instead of using like a vegan shredded cheese, you can use this cheese. Uh, it's not the nacho cheese that we have at the Energy Shack. It's a little bit different type of a cheese. But anyway, all you're going to do now is you're going to load your cheese onto your macaroni. And when this bakes in the oven, I actually am going to need to make another batch for the second guy. I like it very, very cheesy. Um, let's see. Let's see. Ooh. Screen capture. I think I'm going to load it here. Okay. So you're going to mix that in and over. Now this pasta you know if you get the brown rice pasta it's um probably goes over with kids a little bit better um but if you get the brown rice pasta it looks like white pasta and it kind of melts into the cheese a lot better than this chickpea pasta 
Okay, but what you're going to do just mix it up in there. And now you need a little bit of a topping. So I have some gluten free bread that I just turned into breadcrumbs, and you put that over the top. I mean, you can also get a little bit unhealthier and you could put some crushed up tortilla chips on top. But then what you'll also need to do is take your olive oil and you're going to want to put your olive oil just on the top. Yummy. We are going to put this in the oven for about 30 minutes, 35 minutes, maybe 40. I don't know, it's in the recipe. And then you are going to leave it uncovered for maybe about seven to 10 minutes. Okay, don't we'll worry about this extra pasta later. So that for mac and cheese, so simple, right? Before we start, before, um, you know, uh, the show started, I just cooked pasta for seven minutes. Like really, that's all you need to do. Mac and cheese is like the easiest thing to do ever. Uh, and it tastes really delicious. All right, I'm going to take my Vitamix here. We're just going to... Uh, rinse it out and I'll show you what we're going to do. Now, some people may have nut allergies and you can't use cashews. You could use sunflower seeds for this recipe. Um, I, you can also steam some cauliflower and use cauliflower instead. Uh, I'd mix cauliflower and potato together. And so you can also do that. Um, if you have nut allergies and don't want to use seeds at all, but sunflower seeds are fine. Almonds are also okay if you're allergic to cashews, but you can have that. So now let's do these enchiladas. All right, so, woo, great. This is going to take a little bit of work. So not really, totally. What you want to do is you want to start with having a uh, some sort of a tray, a casserole dish, okay? And in that casserole dish, you are going to want to put a little bit of oil on the bottom. So I have some avocado oil. That's what I'm going to use. Um, some kind of oil that's good with high heat. And just rub it around there. Wonderful. Okay, now if I was in Toronto, I would be able to get my gluten-free wraps. Um, but they didn't have any here in Sudbury and I forgot to take them with me. So I'm using regular tortillas, but I highly recommend you use a gluten-free wrap for these, but I'm going to do it anyways. We're going to have gluten. I probably won't eat any, but that's okay. The kids that are coming really won't care. They eat bread every day. All right, so you're going to take your tortilla. You're going to lay it down. And just for those who have just, who have just come in, Whoops, I keep leading all these people in the waiting room. Um, pin the second Carolyn, that's not talking. Pin the second Carolyn to your screen. That way you can see the bigger picture, okay? And you can also see the bigger picture. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our mix together and bring it over here. So 
let me not destroy my counter and put a hot pad under there. Be sure that if I was cooking for you, every time I take a drink and every time I touch something, I would be washing my hands 10 times, but this is for my family and they don't mind or they don't know. Okay, but I am just gonna wash my hands because I'm so used to that. All right, so um, we're gonna take our tortilla shell. We have our mix. Now here's the thing, in this mix is a lot of liquid. That's important. I'm gonna show you why at the end. So you wanna get a spoon that's kind of like this with the holes in it, and that's what we're gonna use. You're gonna wanna grab yourself some vegan cheese. You can get diet, you can get whatever. This is um, what they have here in Sudbury. So this is what we're going with. You could also use that cheese that we just made. That works too. So if I was doing this with the cilantro, which I really should have, it's in the fridge, but I didn't wash it and chop it, so we're leaving it alone. Okay, you're gonna lay your cheese down in the middle. And then you are going to take your mix and try to strain it out. Probably I should just make sure it tastes good. That would probably be important, although I don't have to. The only thing I'll just taste a little bit of the sauce. Make sure. Wonderful. Okay, so now we're going to take our mix and you're going to strain it out a little bit. And it goes in your enchilada, your collard greens, your zucchini, kids have no idea, your black beans, they don't care. It's just wrapped up in bread with cheese. Okay, and then you're just going to bring it up, pull the sides in, push that in, press it a little bit. And we cannot see what you're doing. We only can see your face moving around. Yeah, so what I was saying is to, what I was saying was to there's two Carolyn's on there. Mm -hmm. Pin the second Carolyn to the front screen. But if that's confusing for people, I'll just do it. Yes, that's better. Thank okay, you. yeah. There's two Carolyn's though. There's two screens. Okay. Yeah, but thank you for telling me that because I'm sure you're not the only one. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna take our, our other wrap. And we're gonna put the cheese down. And we're gonna take our mix. You're straining it out. Okay, you're putting it in there. Pull it in to the sides. Okay, and I'll just do one more and then I'll show you how we turn these into other things. Okay, so all I did, I didn't even use oil. I just sauteed onions, peppers, collard greens, zucchini. You can use whatever vegetables you want. I added chili powder, cumin, onion powder, and a little bit of lime juice. I added black beans at the end and a can of tomatoes. And again, those who are um, on here are going to get the recipe. Okay. Because of what we need to do next, I am going to quickly just put a couple together because we actually do need to fill this tray for me to put the sauce on top. So let me just quickly finish these last couple.
Now, you know what, this kind of mix, it's so delicious on its own. You could just serve this with some quinoa and it, it took just the time it took to, to cook down everything is, is all it took, which was really like maybe 15 minutes, not a lot. So this is a really simple dinner. I know that, um, you know, kids can be involved in this. And I'm gonna show you how kids can also use this to create a lunch for school, because that's also what we did. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. Don't worry about the juice coming out. Yep, we can pile in a couple more. So we're gonna do that. Now your cheese shreds, they come in different kinds. It's mostly made with just uh, tapioca flour. So they're really uh, good or bad for you. In fact, I think they're a great option for those who are avoiding dairy. So we'll do this. And And I think that'll be good. So I want to show you here what we're going to do with this other one. So we're going to put this here. That's good. So with this one, friends, I'm going to take you over to the other side. Now you have to have your you have to have the second cam Carolyn pinned to the front because I'm bringing the other camera over to the to the other side. I will try to bring the laptop over for those who can't do that. Let's see if that works. I'll try. So basically what I'm doing here, uh, basically what I'm doing here is I am, um, I have like a roti pan on the stove and I'm going to put a little bit of avocado oil on it. We've taken the exact same mix. We've taken the exact same recipe and the enchilada. If you are from South America, you would not be happy with my enchilada because I know that it's not what it traditionally is supposed to be. But, you know, we here in Canada kind of take whatever we want, make it what we want, but it works. It's healthy, makes kids happy. So I, I folded it the same way. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to on this hot pan. I don't know if you can hear that, but now I'm just searing it. And I'm gonna keep turning it over and turning it over and it's going to become a burrito. And this is something you can put in the kids' lunches. Um, you can take for work. Again, I recommend a gluten-free wrapper. I want to make sure that you can see that that's a lot of cooking yeah okay so you, once it browns on either side um then you'll be able to see that while this is cooking I'm going to make one more because I want to show you actually I'm, I'm just going to bring this stuff over because I want to show you what we're going to do next to make it a quesadilla So yeah, not, not quite there yet. 
we want to just get it browned on each side and we'll keep turning it and turning it and turning it. So I'm just going to move it over a little bit. And just make sure that it's And I'm going to show you how we do the quesadillas. Now with the quesadillas, I prefer, that's too much oil, let me fix that. I prefer with the quesadillas to use tofu instead of the beans, but you can use the beans. So now what we're going to do is we put cheese on half of it, okay? So cheese is on half. And then I'm gonna put the toppings on top of the cheese. So watch for a second. Ooh, look at that. So nice and delicious. This hot stove, hot, hot. Okay, so. Um, now you have a delicious burrito coming up. Yummy. So I'm going to turn this uh, pot around. Careful with these pans. Super hot, just so that you can see. Okay, so now we're going to make our quesadilla. Yummy. For the quesadilla, you put cheese on the bottom, you put cheese on the top, and all you're doing is folding it over. Pressing it down and folding it over. Your same filling is inside. This is ready. You could brown it, of course, on both of the sides. That would be perfectly fine. Let me just grab this off. Okay, so now the tricky thing is, is when this quesadilla is ready, you do have to flip it. Okay, so you're gonna have to flip it. It's gonna be brown on both sides. And then you just cut it into triangles and it becomes your, uh, uh, your quesadilla. Okay, so that becomes the quesadilla, a little bit of extra cheese, but the exact same filling, exact same tortilla. You could use a frying pan if uh, your um, if you don't have like this roti type pan, but let's get this flipped over, see if it's brown enough on both sides. Yep, sure is. Ooh, so yummy. And the gluten-free tortillas that we have uh, do the exact same thing. Okay, so that's cooking. What we're going to do now is I'm going to take the leftover canned tomatoes, mostly lots of juice in there. And remember, we had a little bit of sauce uh, left with the mix that we're making. I'm going to bring us back over there. Alrighty, so I'm going to bring it back over here. Yeah, I think I'll just leave that there for now and turn this stove off. Wow, that's super duper ready. Um, wait.
Okay, so folks, we have our quesadilla, which is ready. Very nice and delicious. Delicious quesadilla. And we just cut that up and that becomes so delicious and yummy. Okay, so what we're going to do now, though, is we're just going to finish our enchiladas. Okay, so there's enough for me to do one more. And I am going to take my burrito and uh, I am going to just actually mix it in with my enchiladas. Nobody will know. And just do one more. All right, so we've got our cheese there. We're just going to do one more enchilada. We're going to make the sauce, and folks, we are finished. And But I'm going to show you what's happening here, because as we do these enchiladas, we have some leftover sauce. We've got some juice in there. And we need to do something with this juice. A little bit. There we go. Okay, so let me just bring the camera down and show you what's going on here. For those who are not able to. So we have our enchiladas full inside our pan here. Okay, now we're gonna put what's called a mole sauce on top of it. And usually a mole sauce is a sauce that has a little bit of chili powder in it and cacao, but we're not gonna use the cacao. But the other thing as well is that inside our mix, we now have a lot of extra sauce. So there's, there's a lot of extra sauce inside our mix. So what I wanna do is just, I'm gonna add this sauce into those canned tomatoes. So if you remember our canned tomatoes and you remember our canned tomatoes here, now we have the extra canned tomatoes and I'm basically just going to pour this extra sauce into it. With the vegetables is fine. And then what you're gonna wanna do I'm going to get all of that in there. So this will be one more burrito mix. So I will turn that into a burrito later. For some family members, I will be happy to eat it. Okay, so now you have a little bit of sauce. So now I'm going to take this. I'm going to add a little bit of chili powder to it, a little bit of cumin, some onion powder, kind of the same thing here. Um, normally you would add a little bit more spice to it and cacao, but I'm going to throw a little bit of carob in there instead. Oops. I have some toasted carob powder and I'm going to just put that in there and We're going to go back over to our blender. Chili powder. Um, for this one, I don't actually add the cumin to that one. Okay, so I'm not going to be adding the cumin to it. It just has the chili powder and the um, carrot powder in it. Plus, it has all the seasonings from the other one. Oh, that's really good. Uh, 
I just forgot to add the salt. So now we end up with this mole sauce, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the mole sauce and we're gonna pour it on top of our enchiladas. So you're good, just soak the bread. Perfect. Marvelous. You're going to take the leftover cheese and just sprinkle some on top. And ta-da, you have your enchiladas. We're gonna put some oil over that. We're gonna bake that in the oven for um, about 30 minutes covered. Uh, we're gonna do like maybe 10 minutes uncovered. And it's so delicious. It's so simple. And that's the end. Does anybody have any questions? Let me just see if we have any questions in the chat before. All right. Okay. I don't see any questions in the chat. I hope that was, uh, I hope it was all well received. You guys are a quiet crowd, but I know that I muted everybody. Um, but before um, I go, I just want to let you know that um, if you saw the email today on Sunday, September 24th, if you, or maybe, you know, a family is someone who has a family, um, but well, we're having a free event. Uh, it's a parenting seminar showing, showing parents how to navigate through this age of technology. Um, and we're going to be doing parenting tips. There's going to be a live show for kids. It's going to be really amazing. So just get on Eventbrite, get your tickets, free lunch free childcare services, free everything. And if you know somebody who would be interested, we're looking for some sponsors. It's going to be a very costly event, but I don't wanna charge anybody a penny. I wanna make it free to the community because it's such valuable information. I don't want anyone to miss it. So if you know somebody that would like to be a sponsor, even if it's you know, $100, $200, or if they have a thousand, um, whatever, they will also be um, rewarded as a sponsor. But either way, I hope you can get your tickets or tell some friends about it because it's going to be amazing. And that's on September 24th. And if you would like to know more about how to do hands-on cooking, natural remedies, um, then uh, go on to our lifestyle retreats for one weekend in November from Thursday to Sunday for that event for the weekend is going to be amazing. It's a retreat in a mansion in Belleville on a hundred acres of land. And we are going to teach you hands-on how to cook, how to do natural remedies. At the same time, you'll be fed live juices, wonderful food. Uh, it's going to be a very relaxed setting. We're going to go on nature walks, but you will learn hands-on how to do more healing foods for your body, not just for kids. So I, I recommend, because spots are already filling up for November, that if you can afford it, um, the November one is only $8.95. So I know that's still a bit of money, but $1,000 for a fantastic life-changing weekend. Just go to our website, go under lifestyle life, uh, go under services, go to lifestyle retreats, and I hope you can join us. Um, there's just a couple questions coming in the chat. So with the mac and cheese, the question is, can it be made the day before? Um, yes, uh, it will. It can be made the day before and it will keep for about five days in the fridge. It also freezes well. And I recommend you heat it up by putting it back into a glass container and just warming it up in the oven for a few minutes. I'm not a fan of microwaves. Um, and the recipes are going to be available to everybody that signed up on Eventbrite because I will have your email addresses through there. Um, so I'll be able to send that to you. And um, yeah, I think uh, you are most welcome. 
Uh, we're just, just getting some thank yous here. I, honestly, uh, it's just such a great way. And these things make fantastic lunches. The enchiladas don't make a good takeaway lunch, but like I said, you could, while you're doing this, make a few burritos, right? At the same time. And those make really great lunches because you can eat them hot or cold. Same with the quesadillas, hot or cold and so simple. And you've made enough food in like what we've we been together here for an hour. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely easy to do in an hour. You've made enough food for an army almost. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for being here. We've reached our time. I'm not seeing, I'm just seeing thank yous. It looks like I've made it simple enough so that everybody's questions are answered. And um, if you have any more questions, I'm just gonna put my um, the email address for Everybody in here, if you have questions about these recipes, about the retreats we're doing, uh, anything else, please, uh, info at energyshackjuicebar.com. And definitely try to sign up for that November 24th. If you have children or no families with children, it's going to be an amazing free event. Um, kids will love a big show with a live white blood cell showing kids why they have to eat their vegetables. And it works every time. Uh, so anyway, guys, have a really good night. I'm just going to info at energyshackjuicebar.com is just where you go if you have any questions. And let me just change that again and put that here, paste, and there you go. All right, guys, have a good night. Thanks, Carolyn. All right.